In this tutorial, we're going to make a flapping butterfly. I've created this model of a monarch, and I've named the pertinent parts, the wings and the antennae, the things that I intend to animate. And then I've grouped all of the elements and named it butterfly. And this is important because we're going to be putting it on animation path afterwards, and everything has to be nested or hidden inside a group name. Uh, so let's take a look at the timeline before we actually get involved here. You probably have noticed that at the bottom of the user interface there is a numerical rule for timeline available. To the right of that is a active box where I can change the number if I want to. So if I were to make that a 10, you'll notice that a gray box or the playback head, if you would want to refer to it as that, appears at frame number 10. So as I drag through or drop or wherever I navigate, wherever the playback head is, it's reflected in this box. Directly to the right are a series of buttons that resemble an old VCR control panel, and we'll talk about those as we proceed. Directly below that, back here at the beginning of the timeline, there are two boxes. The outside box allows me to start my animation at whatever frame I'd like. In this case, the default setting is at frame number one. And then there's a corresponding box down the other end of the timeline here. This one says 200, and that means that my animation is 200 frames in length. But if you look at the actual timeline, only 120 frames are reflected. So if we take a look at the inside boxes, the one at the beginning also reflects frame number one, which we can pretty much see here. And then the last frame that is visible on our timeline is 120. So these numbers on the inside allow us to define the area we want to preview of a longer animation, in this case, 1 through 200. So I can change these numbers at will depending on what my needs are. Now, we're going to move down towards the right-hand end corner of our user interface and down here in the lower right hand corner the two icons if I roll my cursor over the second one in from the right you'll see it says auto keyframe toggle I want to click on that and I want to be sure it's got a blue background and that just assures us that as we virtually edit our model on screen that it will drop a keyframe for us in our timeline based on where our playback head happens to be located. We're going to add one other component to our shelf and then we'll go and we'll use these and it'll all make sense. So I'm going to hold down Control Shift, I'm going to go to Windows, Animation Editors, I'm going to click on Graph Editor. Now we're ready to go. So I'm going to start my animation process. Now I'm going to select the wing here, the right wing, and I'm going to make sure my playback head is at the beginning of my timeline so I can manually drag it through or I can click and drag through the active numerical box and punch in one and hit return. And My objective is to rotate this wing on the z-axis. When I move this I can see that it's articulating on the side of the body the way I'd like. I'm going to zero that out to start with at frame number one. I'm going to right click on the term rotate Z and choose key selected. You'll see that there is a red box in the numerical box for rotate Z up here in the channels window and there's a corresponding red line at the beginning of our timeline. Now I want this to rotate smoothly up and then back to position to create a cycle. I know that uh, the frame rate of my body is 24 frames per second, so I'm going to navigate to frame 24 with the text box or the numerical box, and at 24 I'll just click and drag up my wing, and I think I'll make that an even 50. And now I'm going to move to frame 48 to complete that cycle. I know that I started out with zero, and that's where I want to return. So I'll go up to the text box, punch in zero, and hit return. And now in my timeline, I'll see three keyframes, two identical ones on either end. And then in the center represents the one, 
where the wing is at 50 degrees. Now, if I were to play this using these VCR controls that appear down in the lower right hand corner, I can click on the larger triangle pointing to the right and it's going to play. But it only plays through the keyframes once. So I'm going to stop it by clicking on that triangle again and I'll click here to return to the beginning of the movie. If I were to go to the one that is corresponding or its symmetrical partner at the far right hand side and click on that, you can see now my playback head is at frame 120. Let's go back to the beginning. This is where we're going to use the graph editor. So I'll go up and click on the graph editor with the wing selected. And you'll notice that in the graph editor, you're seeing the Bezier curve connecting the keyframes. And this just represents the cycle we created in our timeline. We'll talk more about this in a future tutorial, but for our needs, we need this, we just need this for one purpose. I'm going to select the word rotate Z, and I'm going to marquee so. I'll go to Curves, Post Infinity, and Psycho. And what this means is that no matter how long my animation might be, if I go and play it, it loops indefinitely. And you'll see that it continues to loop beyond the limitations of those three key frames, which end at frame 48. So let's stop our movie, let's rewind, and let's do the left wing. So I'm going to select the left wing. I'll make sure my playback hit is at frame number one. I can do that dragging it manually. There's a lighter value of gray over the number one, or I can punch number one here in that active frame box that appears at the end of the timeline. I'm going to right click on the rotate Z and choose key selected. Once again, there's the red line, keyframe in our timeline, and the corresponding red box in the channel window next to Rotate Z. I'll go to frame 24. And as I recall, the wing that is already animated was frame was 50 degrees in Rotate Z. So I'm going to make this minus 50 so that it's at the opposite angle. Now we'll go to frame 48. At frame 48, we'll change our rotate Z to zero. So now that cycle is completed, but it only plays through to frame 48. So once again, with that wing selected, I'll go to the graph editor, select rotate Z in the graph editor, marquee select the keyframes, go to curves, post infinity, cycle. 